It's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm hungover. It's June gloom, Saturday, so I got a fake tan. Why not a fake tan? I went to a tanning bed. I'm gonna make some beans and rice. I was gonna go to Pirate Fest, but I think I'm gonna go to Pirate Fest tomorrow. Yeah, I stayed up till 5 a.m. Haven't done that in a long time, so it's okay. Talk to you later. <laughs> Hi everyone, Stacy Burke here. It's a Saturday in the afternoon, four o'clock. Um, no makeup on, hungover, AF. <laughs> Um, I decided, what the heck, I'm just going to do this video. It's like, I was trying to, like, prepare it, prepare it. What do I say? Like, trying to get in the mood for it. But, you know what? I just want to get this video out before, uh, the live chat on the 3rd, July 3rd, by the way, in case you don't know, uh, me and Tanya, Danielle are going to do a, do a live chat, live streaming chat here on YouTube, on my channel. 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, so whatever you, wherever you live, it's 3 o'clock here in California, live. But if you miss it, don't worry about it. We will um, post it up, but we'll be asking que answering questions, but also we have a sponsor, and they have questions, so we'll be answering theirs. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, I'll tell you why I'm hungover. Well, you probably follow my Instagram, but um, if you hear loud noises, I live on the beach. <laughs> Uh, but someone said you can't really hear it, but just letting you know, that's the background noise. Uh, it's June gloom. That's why I'm not out getting a suntan right now. It's like, it's, it's warm, it's humid, but every once in a while the clouds roll in and so it gets cold and it gets hot and it gets cold and it gets hot. And it's just like a pirate festival is going on as well. I'll probably go to pirate festival tomorrow, Sunday, uh, not today, Saturday. Because yesterday after work, um, my my friends, if you know, the Rayford Brothers, they're a rockabilly band. They go, hey, come out. We're, we're playing. So I'm like, okay, I'll come out. I haven't seen you guys in a long time. Just getting over a cold, but I'm going to go see you guys. And I had fun. Um, I hung out with them. I danced. Well, kind of danced. I danced in my chair. But then they offered to uh, bring me home. And when they brought me home, I was showing them around. And my neighbor uh, was home, and um, <coughs> they said, <coughs> excuse me, so I got the cough. They said, come up on the roof, and let's jam, <coughs> because he had a guitar. So, we all go to the roof, and uh, Rayford Brothers play up on my roof. And we're just drinking beers. I made, I think I made him a couple dirty martinis. Um, I didn't have any more. I, I had had some dirty martinis at while I was watching them. Uh, and then he bought me one. And uh, you know how I say it, I'm a lightweight. I'm a lightweight. And I was getting drunk and I'm like, oh God. So when I got home, I, I didn't really um, drink. However, my friend gave me a, um, a Corona, which to me is not drinking. Corona is basically water. So, um, Anyway, so we stayed up, well, we stayed up past 4 o'clock in the morning because we were on the roof and the Rayford Brothers were playing their, you know, guitar and stuff and we were just kind of like just hanging out, chatting um, until 4 o'clock in the morning and then we came to my place and then we watched uh, concert videos <laughs> until like 5 and I still woke up at 8 in the morning, and I did all my chores, I did all I had to do, and uh, I was thinking about going on the beach, um, and laying out, but it, like I said, it's kind of like icky, so I went to the tanning bed, which I know is bad, but I, I had to get tan a little bit, and then tomorrow I plan to go to the Pirate Fest. I'm nursing a hangover, but at the same time I'm having some grapefruit juice pink grapefruit juice and uh, now it sounds like a band's going on it was all quiet earlier I should have filmed earlier but I'm all also watching heart the band heart on access TV they're, they're having a concert and I love watching concert videos 
So I'm just kind of taking it easy today, nursing the hangover, um, and saving my money for the Pirate Festival tomorrow, Sunday. So what's going on with me? Well, there's a lot. But let me just stick to one thing. Okay, as you know, like, yeah, I used to be Hugh Hefner's girlfriend. Uh, I used to uh, work a little bit at Ricky Rackman's Cat House back in the 90s. I also promoted bands way back in the day. I used to promote ba bands when I was young. Um, in fact, I have so many jobs in my life. Uh, but I used to do merch, merchandise for Wild Child. Um, I, I, there's a lot of stuff I used to do. Of course, I do fetish modeling. I still do fetish modeling, which includes wrestling, bondage, and all that kind of stuff. I do YouTube. And I have, and I, had, I was, a, of course, a bartender. I had many jobs. Well, anyway... As you know, for the last probably about 10 years, I have been working at a laundromat. I've been a manager at a laundromat. And I've also been doing deliveries, like delivery service, like a laundry delivery service, but also working at the laundromat, managing the laundromat, doing the schedule for the girls, cleaning the laundromat, taking care of the customers, doing fluff and fold, basically doing people's laundry, um, you know, taking them into dry cleaning, not doing the actual dry cleaning, but taking them in and delivering and all that kind of stuff for the past 10 years. And I like it. You know, like I used to wake up like right at four o'clock in the morning. I don't have to go to work till seven, but I, I got up early because I had a lot of uh, chores to do before I leave. And then um, I would get off work at two o'clock in the afternoon, some from seven to two, like not eight hours, seven hours, but and I worked Monday through Friday, and I loved it. It was like a, a regular job, Monday through Friday. I got off early enough so I could still do whatever I needed to do. If I had some shoots, I could still do a shoot after work. I could do whatever I want after work as long as I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning the next day, right? It was great. Um, and, um, you know, it was, a, it was a dependable paycheck. Every two weeks I got a paycheck. And then I would get raises, you know, like you get every two years or three years, I'd get a raise or something like that. Um, and I liked it. It was dependable. I kind of like having a schedule because it was like kind of like a, um, it was kind of like being on cruise control. But at the same time, like uh, I could decide if I want to do something different, but, or because I like variety, I like doing something different, but it's nice to have cruise control to go through so you just feel like a purpose in life you just get things done and then if you want to change it up you could change it up but it's nice to fall back on the, the cruise you know like on the the set thing which is like a schedule um and i liked it it was dependable like i said you get a paycheck and it's good for taxes it was like good for a lot of things because when freelancing you got to do your own taxes and it's more difficult um um because fetish modeling, don't get me wrong, I love it. But one of the drawbacks is, first of all, driving in traffic. That's the beauty of the laundromat. It was local. I could have have walked, but I didn't walk because I needed my car to do the deliveries. So I didn't walk. Uh, but I could have if I wanted to. Uh, with fetish modeling, sometimes you got to drive long ways. Sometimes you're stuck in traffic. Sometimes the girls are late because they're stuck in traffic. Sometimes you're late because you're stuck in traffic, which makes everyone else late. Um, also another thing with fetish modeling, like, um, which I'm experiencing to this day still, you get a photo shoot all lined up and then something happens where it's postponed or it's just plain old canceled. It's just plain old canceled. So you're depending on that money. You are already like, okay, that money is going to go to that bill that like, that's going to, but then they cancel it on you. And then you're like, oh my God. And not only do they cancel on you or they postpone it. But you, you save that day for that photo shoot. And then when other photo shoots come around or other scheduling or fun things or events or anything happens where they say, hey, can you, you want to do that day? I'm like, oh, nope, I got a photo shoot. I can't do anything that day. I got a photo shoot. And then they cancel on you. Then that fun stuff you could have done, you can't, already gone. Or you had a, you could have had an opportunity to book a shoot and make money, but it canceled. But now that shoot that you booked that you could have booked is gone, and so you're left with no money. 
it's this feast or famine. And that's one of the reasons why I like having the laundromat gig because you always like, I just guaranteed if I show up, I get paid. If I show up, I get paid. If I show up, I get paid. And it was consistent. Like the money wasn't all that great, but I like having a dependable paycheck. And at the same time, I can still do my fetish modeling or do whatever I want to do. And if, and if, and if that flaked or postponed or got canceled, <coughs> I was okay. You know what I mean? Well. <laughs> I think it was July. No, I'm sorry, June. Still June right now. It's June 29th. June, I think 17th. It was a Monday. My boss comes up to me. And he says, I can't afford cost of labor anymore. <laughs> as of July 1st I'm not going to have any more employees sorry I can't afford you guys so basically he's letting us all go which sucks less than two weeks notice um, all of us is gone not just me everyone's gone laid off basically laid off it sucks for the customers because he didn't want us to tell the customers and he wants to continue business as usual, which I thought was wrong, but whatever, it's not my business. Um, literally. <laughs> um, so I just went along and just worked my normal shift and, um, and stuff like that. He did offer me something because he couldn't afford, um, he couldn't afford employees. But he offered me something, and of course I turned it down because it just, it wasn't like, um, it was basically like, um, he wanted me to, uh, buy out, um, agreed, uh, the, not, not buy the business, but buy out, he wanted me to buy out the fluff and fold business, the, the, not the laundromat part, but the doing the laundry for people for a dollar in exchange for use of the premises to run my own business at no cost. But buyer agrees to keep store clean and assist laundromat customers as usual. So he wanted me to assist his customers in the laundromat and keep it clean, take out the trash, clean out the lint, vacuum, like do everything, do labor for him for free. And then um, he would supply me the soap and everything to do my, my laundry. But I would have to pay for machine costs, meaning um, if the, the like the big washing machines like cost like nine dollars because they're big washing machines, I would have to spend nine dollars to do a load of do that do that big wash or whatever, and I would have to spend money on the dryers, and then. Um, and then if I want to do the fluff and fold and then sell it. So I would have to probably high I would probably have to raise the prices of fluff and fold. And if I had this business, it wouldn't be as lucrative as it was at this time because this would be without the 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 seven employees and without being open twenty uh, without being open seven days a week for like twelve hours a day. Because there's no way I'm gonna be there twelve hours a day every single day for free so it's like I I the the profits would be lower because the people the customers would be able to pick up their dry cleaning and their fluff and fold anytime they want they would have to pick it up whenever I was there for free because I'm not getting paid anymore um, and so I would have to pay I had to pay my own health insurance I had to pay my own um, credit card uh, transaction machine um, and I had a yeah what else do I have to pay basically I was independent contractor I would have to pay my own insurance I would have to pay for my own um, like everything basically I have the business and I would have to pay for the machines and I had to still 
help the customers and uh, clean his laundromat for free. And I was like, I don't think that's wise because first of all, uh, what if no one comes in? There's been days when no one comes in it for the fluff and fold, not for the laundromat. And I might not make any money, but you still get free labor. And then health insurance, how much is that? And for the credit card machine, how much is that? And uh, like, what am I signing? Because I don't want to be responsible for a lot of money. And why am I? And for the the cost of the machines, that 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 I'm paying a lot of money for laundry. So you're getting you're getting profits. I'm giving you profits because I'm using your machines. So you're making money off me, and I'm cleaning your place for free. I don't know if that's a good deal because I, I said I said to him, I go, I could go into any other laundromat, any laundromat, a cheaper laundromat, and do the same thing. Run the machines and do people's laundry and then sell it to them. And for a credit card, I could get my own credit card thing on my phone. And I wouldn't have to pay health insurance and any of that. So I, I don't know if this is a good deal. I need to think about it. Well, he didn't want that. So he went and found someone else to do it. Because I just had a lot of questions. And he wasn't answering my questions. So I didn't want to sign that deal. And then I started thinking, like, well, if I'm going to work for free and do other people's laundry, I could do it from home. I could buy myself a laundry a washer and dryer or I could go to a cheaper laundromat so I'm sorry but no deal until you give me answers or you work out some let's discuss well things must be in dire straits because I heard that his lease is up in February and the landlord does not want the laundromat there because he thinks it's bringing in the homeless or something like that I don't know there's lots of drama with his laundry and I don't know, he's not telling me everything. And some of the things he's telling me, I don't know what's true and what's not. Like, I don't know. I've caught him in certain lies. So it's like, I'm kind, I kind of wanted just to break away from that. Because even if I was an independent contractor, I don't know if I want to be around that shadiness. So um, I finished off my two weeks. I got my last paycheck and so I'm a little scared because now I'm unemployed kind of I mean I still do fetish modeling but I really need that money that I worked with laundromat that helped me a lot for with bills that helped me a lot with paying rent that that and plus that was dependable money like I said because fetish modeling already two shoots I had two shoots I had next week either canceled or postponed so that's scary right so I decided I'm gonna go first first full-on going back to fetish modeling I'm back to fetish modeling completely I, I mean I never been away from it but I'm going full-on because I now I don't have a schedule at the laundromat to hold me back because there's been some things where I'm like well I can't do it that day I had limited schedule now I'm I'm working whenever someone needs me. Another thing I'm doing, I'm going back to working for bands. I am going to be a merch girl like I used to be or whatever, like clicking I like I think I have a gig uh next weekend where I have they get paid by uh, how many people come see them. So I have to click how many people come in. So I I'm going to start working for bands again and I'm going to be either the merch girl or helping them out however they want. I'm just going to be the girl at the box office, counting people, making sure the guest list is correct, um, whether they want a water, what or you want me to sell you sell a t-shirt, whatever. I'm going to be a band girl, <laughs> a merch girl. I don't know what you call it. I, I, I don't, not really a promoter, but just someone that works with bands. And um, so I'm going back to that. And that's pretty much by word of mouth because I, you know, and I did put that out there and I already got two gigs lined up with that. So that's good. Um, so I'm going back to my roots on that. 
for the bands. Um, and another thing I'm going to put in the water is I figured I'll still do laundry. I don't have a washer and dryer. Maybe someday I will. But in the meantime, I will continue. I put the word out to all my friends and family and neighbors. And um, I've been telling a few customers um, and stuff where I will do their laundry. I will go pick up their laundry. And I will take it probably to a cheaper laundromat than what I was at because my laundromat was more expensive. Because um, it's in a, you know, a better part of town, so it's more expensive because it's higher rent, you know. So, but I would probably go somewhere else, cheaper rent, and um, and do their laundry, and then uh, charge a fee, and then take it to them, and drop it off. So I'm still gonna do laundry. I'm gonna work for bands. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing fetish modeling. I am just going to hustle my little butt off. And I can't say little because I used to have a big butt and now it's gone. So I'm going to say I'm going to hustle my little butt off. And uh, I'm unemployed. <laughs> am I stressed? Oh, yes. Maybe that's why I stayed up till 5 o'clock in the morning last night. Because that was the end of it. That was the end of it. Got my last paycheck and I'm out of there. You know. And I... We didn't do anything wrong. I know my boss is kind of just angry at all the employees because for some reason he's angry at us because he can't afford the 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 labor and he's just one of those people that will blame others and stuff like that because I brought to the attention a lot of things that he's been doing wrong business wise and sometimes they don't like labor to tell you what's wrong. But like a suit, he would get charged $12 for, and he would sell it to his customers for $10, and plus he would have 50% coupons, and I, I, and I go, what are you doing? You're losing money. But he thought it would all come out in the wash, <laughs> but it didn't. But anyway, it's here or there. I'm not going to talk smack. It's just like, it's his business. It's what he chose to do. And I just got to take care of myself. And the offer they gave me was not good. And I was willing to sit down with them and try to make it good or try or just ask questions. Like what, like, what am I signing before I put my name on it? Like, how much is this? Because you said I'm responsible for this. So I want to know how much is that. And when the weights and measures, measures comes, because we have scales, do I get do I have to pay the fine if they're not up to scale? And when the health inspector comes, does she? am I responsible, independent contractor? And how much is the insurance? Like, and he wasn't going to answer me. So, and then when he wasn't answering me, and he was pressuring me, he goes, I, got, I, I need to know, yes or no, in one hour. He tried to give me, like, one hour to answer him. And that's why I just said no. I'm not going to be pressured like that, you know, I, I just can't, and I don't feel comfortable yet, and all this news that you're giving me, you're just giving me, and I, I, I have like one hour to digest it, instead of being like transparent from the start, and let me know what's going on with your lease, what's going on, what's going on, you know, it's other people's lives, and I know he's not happy with it, and I know he's stressed as well. And I have empathy for him. And I hope all works out. And I know things will work out because he's pretty well to do. And the only thing is, like, it would be sad if he does lose that business. And I hope he doesn't. But it's the way of the world right now. I don't know where you live, but where I live, a lot of businesses are going under. The lease, their lease is going up. They can't afford it. Um, mom and pop shops can't afford it. Even the big wig companies can't afford it. A lot of people just can't afford it. Um, even rents going up here. We got a lot of Airbnb people, which means uh, no community people. Airbnb don't spend money here. They, they they go elsewhere. So basically, our community's dying, and it's sad. Um, this is going to be a long vlog. I could go more into that situation, but all I need. All I am, I'm just going to put this video just to, this is my life right now. And it's stressing, but I'm going to be okay. I'm just going to work my friggin' butt off. 
I've been I've done this before. And if worse comes to worse, I can walk into Target or I can get a job anywhere. I'm fine with walking into Taco Bell or Del Taco, any of those places, and getting a job. I'm fine with that. And I probably will do that someday. You never know. But in the meantime, I'm going to just... I already got some photo shoots, like I said, lined up. And a couple canceled and a couple postponed. But a few others came in. And I got a couple band gigs. I'm working for a few bands. Because I figured I'd go to a, a band gig anyway. I love going to see live music. So why not get paid for it? I get to see the show and get paid for it. Right? It makes perfect sense. So I'm going to try this out. I'm going to try this out. I'll probably do more videos. Because <laughs> I'll have time on my hands. <laughs> so, uh... That's what's going on with me. That's what's going on with me. Uh, got laid off. You know, so uh, now I just got to figure out how to pay the bills. So, am I stressed? Oh, hell yeah. But you know what? I'm not worried. Like I said, I could walk into Taco Bell. You know, it might be hard because, you know, it's like summertime. Everyone's looking for a job. Everyone just graduated. You know, they're all looking for jobs. So I'm going to be competing with a bunch of 18-year-olds that just got out of high school. But I'm going to do it. And, and you know, like I said, I could do talk about the only thing is, like, um, the modeling will make a little more money. The band thing will be like a little more money. So I'm going to try my hand at doing a little more money and doing the laundry thing and all that kind of stuff. Since I'm home, I'm going to put the word out really hard this week that I will do, you know, like, Local. Not you guys, because I'm not going to drive all the way out there. <laughs> this is local. So I'm going to do my laundry delivery service. I'm still going to be a laundry delivery girl. Uh, and do it for my sisters. I'm doing it for themselves. And I'm sorry if the lighting's bad. It's not sunny. It is overcast, so that's why. And I'm so hungover. My head hurts so bad. I've been eating beans and rice. <laughs> But, um, yeah, my horoscope was saying don't say anything. And I didn't want to say anything till my last day, you know, because you never know what's going to really happen. But I did get my last paycheck. Uh, the girls this weekend are working. And then as of July 1st, no more employees where I work at. Um, my boss says he has some girl working for free. <laughs> Good luck to her. And I feel bad for her because no one trained her. She's going in by herself, and I feel bad for the customers because I hope everything gets handled right. But I'm going to walk away from it because whenever I try to do something to help, you know, it, it doesn't help. He doesn't want it, so. I'm unemployed. I'm unemployed. I'm unemployed. <laughs> I do gotta admit, it was freedom when I walked out of there. Oh, it was freedom. It just felt so freeing. Like, but it's gonna be weird though, because now I usually wake up at four. I can sleep in now. Of course, I can't really sleep in that much. I got birds, and so when the sun comes up, I don't want to keep them covered. So I gotta wake up and, and feed them in the morning. So that's gonna keep me. But now working with bands at night. My schedule is going to be all, like, weird. It's going to be all weird. And things are going to cancel. And I'm going to get double booked because I kind of had a gig to work on the 6th. But then I got another gig. And so I don't know how to tell the other gig, like, uh. Because they didn't get back to me yet. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll let you know, but we could probably use you on the 6th. But then someone else said, yes, we need you on the 6th. I'm like, so I'm going to go with the guaranteed one. So, yeah, I've been meeting people and a lot of word of mouth. And my phone's been blowing up. So I'm really excited. Of course, it's only the first week. I need this to be continuously. That's what's scary. That was the thing with the laundromat. It was consistent. You know, I was there for 10 years. Monday through Friday, no matter what, I got a paycheck. If you show up, you get a paycheck. So, 
I'm a little interested. I'm interested in what's going to happen. So I'm trying all this, but um, who knows? Maybe I'll be working at Taco Bell one of these days. I don't know. I don't care. I just need to get a job. I need to make money. I need to pay rent. That's all I care about. Because um, I love this place. My animals love this place. Moving's all bad. <laughs> I don't want to go through all that. I'm going to do whatever. I got my nails dug in, and I'm going to fight like I always do. But uh, that's what's going on. <laughs> All right, I don't want to make this video. It's already 30 minutes. And yes, my sweet baby. And oh, I think I'm going to keep my, the name Sunny and Cher for my birds because I think I told you I was going to name them um, Eugene and Mary after my grandparents who raised me. But it felt weird reprimanding them or like or baby talking them Mary and Jean when they were my elders and I respected them as my grandparents. So I think I'm going to keep Sunny and Cher. I think Sunny and Cher is good. All right, so that's my big news <laughs> so far. There could be more. I don't know. Stay tuned. To all my space cadets and all my briquettes, I hope you have a groovy day. Until next time, peace.